before we get into the Google Stadia specs, today's video is brought to you by Surfshark. And if you guys need a VPN that is very inexpensive, coming in at $1.99 a month, and also has really good features as well as over 66 locations worldwide to use, then this VPN is for you. I've been using it for a few days and it's very simple to use, easy to install, especially for Windows users. It's also got a clean web feature built in, which is very powerful. And the best part is if you use the link in the description below, surfshark.com slash techyesity, you can get this for as little as $1.99 a month. What are you guys waiting for? Links in the description below, but let's get back to those Google Stadia specs and speculation. Cloud Gaming and Google Stadia was a huge announcement from Google, but more so the even bigger interest among tech enthusiasts, myself included, was the fact that Stadia was going to use AMD graphics cards. We didn't get any specific model numbers, nor did we get an exact model on the CPU being used. But since they did throw out hyper-threading, this left many to believe that Google was going to use AMD graphics cards mixed in with Intel CPUs for their systems. A friend of mine posted a Twitter survey, and this relates well to market demand, in that this is the least used combination of hardware in PC gaming. And with that, it positions Google to get the best deal, all other things equal. Though as far as the hardware itself, what we know so far is that there will be a custom GPU solution being used. However, in terms of its performance, it resembles that of a Vega 56 very closely, where the Vega 56 solution had 10.5 teraflops and 56 compute units and HBM2, the Google Stadia variant has only 0.2 teraflops more performance and everything else looks the same. CPU wise and just like the GPU hardware, used hardware is highly unlikely due to obvious things like tax benefits, reliability, warranty, and maintenance. So the 2.7 gigahertz solution with hyper-threading that Google mentioned in their presentation is what I believe a Xeon E2176M. This has six cores, 12 threads, and the cache matches up to what they have stated. And this is the cheapest variant in its SKU line and is also very power efficient. Boosting up to 4.4 gigahertz, this enables single threaded games to run smoothly and then having six cores, 12 threads available would provide smooth FPS in games that demand more CPU grunt. Google can also benefit from Xeon reliability and also further the use of DDR4 ECC registered memory, or here's the kicker, low power DDR3 memory, which is extremely cheap compared to that of current DDR4 pricing. So my guess is Google has really thought this through and got the best deals possible for not only longevity, but also performance. And matching up these specs, seems like gamers will indeed be able to play what Google is promising. So advertised is 4K 60 FPS with HDR. Now this of course will depend on the title and the settings. Games like Battlefield 5 and Apex Legends, for example, max settings at 4K would be a struggle to get this 60 FPS figure on this near carbon copy of a Vega 56. Though lowering the settings or playing something like Dota 2, for example, wouldn't be a problem whatsoever for 4K 60 FPS. The next slide, however, is interesting where they have Xbox One X and PS4 Pro pictured side by side, their GPU and the teraflop numbers are also pictured. Stadia is in a position of having more power, though the massive difference here is that with the consoles, you actually have the hardware and not to mention they are console optimized versus PC optimized. Though that still leaves us with the biggest question in the room relating to the use of this hardware. And that is how much will Google Stadia cost? Well, based on other models that already work, like Sony's PS4 Pro subscription, uh, one would expect maybe a $20 to $30 a month subscription fee, given the caliber of hardware that you don't need to own in order to play the games, and the fact that you'll also no longer have to buy games when they are released. These two services combined make this for a very powerful potential service, and especially for those who don't use a computer for anything but gaming, and don't mind using a streaming service for playing these games. Furthermore, another big factor in favor of Stadia is playing your games anywhere in the world, even off potato-like devices, compared to a PC, of course. Things like smartphones, laptops, and even smart TVs, which does make this a strong proposition. Then another question on top of that is, how will Google make any money at only $20 to $30 a month? That will simply work with economies of scale and the fact that not one single person will use a Stadia PC 24 hours a day, 
I think Google is more relying on the average three to four hours of use per day per person, and then from there essentially reusing the same PC between different people, hence getting much more value out of a single system than any individual ever could. Though the biggest concern by many gamers, myself included, is how will latency affect the individual gaming experience? Google assures that they are on top of this and we will look at this further in the future with tests and analysis on how they could and couldn't get it right. Though I feel this will be the biggest make or break for Stadia and its success. So far they said the controller will bypass the latency of the system altogether that you're currently using and connect directly to Google servers by built-in Wi-Fi reception. As for the amount of dedicated Stadia servers, those details are still unknown. Though Google currently has roughly 2.5 million servers worldwide, and that was back in 2016, so it definitely has the worldwide reach, and if any company was to get this right from the get-go, it would be Google. Though as for the release date and official pricing, that is definitely still up in the air, though I do believe Google will trial this service out in the United States first most likely in an area where there is fast internet, followed by an area where there is mediocre internet, though a worldwide rollout could be a dangerous place. So just like Australia being a test pilot for eBay policies, I believe USA will be the test pilot for Stadia and its initial launch later this year. And of course, whether it is the future of gaming and whether it succeeds depends on how it plays out in the real world. I'm sure Google didn't intend for Google Plus to be a flop, nor did they ever imagine that YouTube would be as big as it currently is. Much like my channel here and how I do things, I believe Google will just roll with the punches and hope they don't get knocked out. With that said though, let us know what you guys think. Are you excited for Stadia? Are you not? I honestly think it will have a big uphill battle in Australia personally, given the quality of our internet. Who knows? I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next video very soon. And also, if you haven't already, check out today's video sponsor, link in the description below. Surfshark, completely safe internet browsing for as little as $1.99 a month. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. And if you use the link in the description, uh, description, but also don't need to break the pank. Pank. <laughs> no.